Good morning. Good morning. And welcome on this last Sunday after Pentecost, um, known as Christ the King Sunday. Our service begins on page 355 of the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
reading from the Epistle to the Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then Jesus said, Jesus, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Today you will be with me in paradise, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week in EFM, Education for Ministry, we were talking about spiritual autobiographies. And that reminded me of the first time I ever did a spiritual autobiography. I was 15 years old, and I had gone to a retreat. It was an, the weekend was referred to as the LSD retreat, Love, Service, and Devotion. And we had to apply to go to this retreat and there were, I believe there were only 30 of us and they broke us up into groups of uh, five groups of six people each and one of those people, actually two of those people, I still know where they are and one of the people in my group here 50 years later, 50 plus years later, I, I know prays for me, and I pray for her. Fifty years later, that was such an important event. It was what I would call a mountaintop event in my life. And one of the things about a spiritual autobiography is that you take a period of time, and at 15, that would have been my whole life, and look at the highs and lows of life and where God is in that situation. And so, if you, if for me, it was a matter of seeing ups and downs. I'm the youngest of six. I had had a brother by that time go to Vietnam. Fortunately, he came home. But a lot of things had happened in our family and in our family business, so it had truly been a time of up and down. But one of the things that in doing that spiritual autobiography that I observed was that there, the presence of God was always there. There was no question about it. There were ups and downs. But you know, the interesting part of it, it wasn't that I always felt that presence near when I was in church or when I was necessarily with my parents, but God brought people into my life. God brought people into my life. And until I did that spiritual autobiography, I did not see it. I did not see it. And this week, as I was going through our lesson, lessons, and we are here at the end of our liturgical year, I, you know, I'm like looking at this and wondering why would the gospel writer want to end with Jesus on the cross? Why? Why would... Why would Luke say, well, let's just leave Jesus right here on the cross, and next week we're going to start Advent, and we're going to start this whole year all over again? And as I meditated on it, I thought, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense, because what we hear in all of these scriptures is how God has been at work in the world, and we each have experienced that in different ways. We hear in the prophet Jeremiah saying, the God is saying, you people have really messed things up. You have scattered my sheep, but I will send a Messiah who will restore the kingdom. I will send one to you. And we hear in the first chapter of Luke that one has been called, that Jesus has come into the world. And we hear in our final reading in 
Luke, that as Jesus is on the cross and he is being ridiculed, he's being mocked, well, if you're the king of the Jews, then take yourself down. If you're the Messiah, get yourself down, save yourself. Oh, and by the way, while you're saving yourself, save us. And then we hear, and isn't that the way we always are? By the way, if you're, you know, God, if you can do this, would you just take care of me, please? Are we sometimes like that? But what we hear in this lesson, which gives me hope, and I hope it gives you a sense of hope, is that our Lord and Savior, while he was hanging on the cross, and one of the men on either side of him said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. One of the things that a spiritual autobiography does is it helps us to remember. Joan Chittister, who is a Benedictine nun and prolific writer, has written the book, Scarred by Struggle, and in that book, she talks about hope. And she says, our hope doesn't, isn't based on what is to come. Our hope is based on what has come. Our hope is based on what we have experienced. And she, she says, when I say that I am in despair, I'm really saying that I've given up on God. Despair says that I am God. And if I can't do anything about this situation, then nothing or nobody can. How often in our society right now are we hearing words of despair? Are we hearing particularly young people who are going through challenging times who cannot have a sense that they are larger, that there's something larger than they are? And I believe what the gospel writer is reminding us is there is one much larger than we are. There is a Lord of Lord, a King of Kings that's greater than all others, that's greater than any earthly king or president or politician or anyone who walks the earth. There is one greater than we are who loves us, who has promised to always walk this road with us, who forgives us for things done and left undone. When I first started teaching X number of years ago, undergraduate students, one of the things I experienced, and I imagine some of you have experienced, is that when students would come home at thanks after they had been home at Thanksgiving and then came back, it was, je it was frequently a very difficult time. Perhaps when they went home, they found that a lot of things that they had thought were going well in their home, maybe weren't going so well. And they came back with maybe a heavy heart, or perhaps they found that they weren't able to connect with some of the people that they had connected before. Or perhaps they found that life wasn't what they had hoped it would be, and going back to school was not going to solve any particular problems. We are still experiencing those types of feelings, and so I want to say something about Thanksgiving and the coming holidays. Um, and I will tell you that is, and I mentioned this in an E News recently, that as the days get darker and um, the days get shorter, and um, and the, when the clock changes, and I see Thanksgiving and Pentecost in front of me, I begin to feel my spirit falter a bit because I know what that means for me as a clergy person is I'm gonna have not, I'm gonna have less time with family at a time when so many other people are seeing family over Thanksgiving and Christmas and over Easter. For clergy, that is a time when, in fact, we ramp up everything and life gets suddenly busy and so how, and I think, and our organists know that, our choir knows that, all of our musicians know that, and for those of you on the altar guild and those of you who serve in churches, you know what I'm talking about. Suddenly, it all picks up. 
But what I found over the years, this doesn't just affect clergy, that there are lots of people who find the darkness of the days and the coming holidays a challenge. And so this, starting with this Thanksgiving, I would like to ask you, as you are thinking about Thanksgiving, whether you are with those that you love or whether you are by yourself, wherever you are, that you might take some time to think about where God is in your life today. Where is God in your life, and where have you seen God in the past? And then, perhaps even if you're sitting around at a table, I know sometimes in families, people will talk about what they're grateful for at Thanksgiving. What if we said not only what we're grateful for, but what does that mean for our future? What does that mean for our future? Because our future is impacted by our sense of love with God and our receiving the gift of grace that comes from God. It's our memory of where God has been in our life. Chittister goes on to say, despair is the affliction of the small-minded who have not so much lost their faith as they have lost their memory. Hope says, remember where you have been before and know that God is waiting for you someplace else now to go on again to something new. We are all on a journey to something new. We are all walking toward a greater light in Christ. And Christ is there. And just as I know that my friend is praying for me, I know that God is with me, even when I don't feel it. And so the second thing I'd like to suggest is that maybe as you're talking with friends and family and really having heartfelt conversations, not those kind of questions, oh, how are you? I'm fine and walk away when you know it's not fine. But to actually take the time to be present Because what our faith is based on is relationships. It's based on relationships with Jesus Christ and with our Lord and Savior who is the Lord of all and the King of kings. Our life is based on that love and that grace. And imagine what it might feel like if somebody said to you today, I'm praying for you. Can you imagine Today, I want you all to know I'm praying for each of you. I'm praying for each of you as we go into these holidays and through the days when we will be seeing loved ones or perhaps we won't. Praying for you, whatever's on your mind, and I want to invite you to pray for those around you. Can you imagine what that might feel like? to be able to say to someone, I'm praying for you, and to give them a sense of hope, and give them a reminder of what God has done for us, and that we can carry into the world, that we carry the light of Christ. Will you do that this Thanksgiving? Will you share your light, and will you offer your prayers? Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the life of Jesus Christ in our midst, we have known God's judgment and mercy. And in the glory of Jesus, we acclaim the image of God invisible. With the whole church, we turn to Christ this day, acknowledging that he alone rules in truth. As we say, when you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. Jesus, Savior and Judge, you have confounded earthly judgment by choosing to be numbered among the transgressors. May your words comfort all who are in prison, all judged guilty by society or church, and all who live on the margins of the human family. When you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. Jesus, condemned and powerless before your enemies, grant to the leaders of peoples to know that their rule is in the service of a greater law. When you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. Christ, firstborn of the dead, through the blood of your cro of cross, you give unity to the divided. Give to the church the hope of resurrection. May we recognize the image of God in your own rising. When you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. Christ, image of the invisible God, free us from holding you in images of our own making. Grant that in the spirit we may see all power and all life transformed by the compassion of the cross. When you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. Christ, give comfort for all those in any need, for health for the sick, especially Richard, Jennifer, David, Geraldine, Mary Jo, Thomas, Caitlin, Gwen, Chester, Gail, Mike, Rick, Kim, Trina, Jill, Caroline, John, Richard, Barbara, Adam, Nancy, Kevin, Stephanie, Dave, Lynn, Yannick, Rick, George, Don, Annie, Deborah, Dennis, Marie, Bob, Susan, Felicia, Bev, Chuck, John, Joanna, Elsie, Alice, and Phil. And food for the hungry, that touched by God, they may shine with the brilliance of God's light. When you come to rule, remember us, O Lord. We acclaim you, Jesus Christ, as the judge condemned to judgment, knowing that in your death the world is judged. Grant that the world may seek God's justice rather than human wisdom, and that all victims of human cruelty 
may share in the victory of life revealed to us in your death and rising. We join our prayers with the pleading of your blood poured forth at God's right hand, where you rule in the spirit forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace. Peace, 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 peace. Are there birthdays or anniversaries? Birthdays or anniversaries? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, my, well, come on up, Augusta. Let's, you know, and anybody who has a November birthday or an upcoming birthday that won't be here, please feel free to come up and let's all pray. We can never get too many birthday prayers. And for somebody 103, this is truly a celebration as well and an opportunity for thanks. Let us pray. Oh, God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please convey our happiest of birthdays. How wonderful. It is indeed. Yes, yes. Well, um, uh, does somebody want to say something about the annual meeting today? Sam? Come on up. Good morning. We are having our annual meeting after church today. Uh, if you didn't bring potluck, believe me, we have lots of food over there, so come and join us uh, for the meeting. Uh, we will be uh, celebrating the uh, people who will be going off the vestry this year and also electing a new vestry. So we hope to see you there as well. And for those young people, come and ask me about my tie. Uh, there's some interesting things about it as well. Good to know. Okay, thank you. Let's see. And Anne, do you want to say anything about the upcoming Advent Day? I think you see in the bulletin the Advent Festival advertised. I want to thank Robin and Cleo for making this nice announcement. And I hope you'll look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention that next, well, Dawn, as the worship chair, would you like to say something about Advent 1 and communion? Thank you. Good morning. Um, so it is 2022, and we are two and a half years in to a pandemic, and we are now just about ready to get, I don't know about back to normal, but into our new normal. And so we've decided that um, after all of this time, with a lot of precautions, we're ready to return to communion at the rail and uh, serving from the common cup. Um, there's a lot to be said about that, and so we'll be sending out some notes in the e-news this week. Um, but the short version is um, we will, not this week, but starting again next week, uh, return to communion at the rail. So we walk up to the rail and kneel there. Um, we will be serving both the wafer and from the cup. Um, you do not need to drink from the cup to have a complete communion uh, experience, to be fully uh, participating in the experience. And if you're not comfortable doing so, don't. 
Um, but if you're ready to come back to that, so are we. So we'll have more notes about that in the e-news, and we hope to see you doing that next week. Thank you. Thank you. Peggy, did you want to say something? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. After much deep thought and careful consideration, as of March the 1st of this coming year, I'm retiring as your organist. After many discussions with Reverend Nancy and Dr. Chris, who have helped me through this process, I have decided that the time has now come for John's Memorial to find someone else to carry on the instrumental work that is needed to help our choir and congregation remain strong in singing praise to God. Or, as Psalm 149 said a couple of weeks ago, let the high praises of God be in their throats. To assist the church's search for that someone, I've chosen to date several months from now. I have enjoyed playing your organ and your piano so much for the past 25 years, but that isn't really the story. It has been a story of making music with the choir and all you who sit in the pews and sing your hearts out. It has been about experiencing together the astonishing ability and power of music to unleash the Holy Spirit in this place and then sending us forth to love and serve the Lord. You will never know how many great memories I have of hearing you all raise the roof on a favorite hymn unless you were in a position to see me smiling broadly. So many of you have taken the time to thank me for my work, and you will never know how much I appreciated that. It has gone by so quickly, as is so often the case with joyous experiences. But I'm not going anywhere. Oh, no, because I will either be beside you in the pew or in the choir, since Chris has promised to keep a slot open for me in the alto section. And in the meantime, if you have any ideas about someone who might be the right person for the job, please let Nancy or Chris or a vestry member know. I thank you and peace be with you. Somehow, Peggy, I'm afraid these three months are going to go quickly. And um, we thank you for your service. And, um, and I'm just so thrilled to hear that you'll still be with us, that we will still see you. So thank you. Thank you all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Great Thanksgiving will continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. The congregation may stand or kneel or sit as you are comfortable. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.